Circulate this mic, the blue one. Not working? Yeah, we'll see if it goes as far. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite. <laughs> yeah, good enough. about the physical cause and effect, not on a quantum level, yes. on a Newton level, on things like there are uh, gravity rules, there are acceleration rules, and so on. How do they depend on our mind? Okay, this good question. Very good question. Okay, see the physical cause and effect, the karmic cause and effect, of course, it is related to the mind. A mind the, the element of the intention is involved. The intention to move, then the all the actions, karma comes to come into play. With the karma, then the effects are given rise to. That is related to the mind. What about the purely physical uh, cause effects? For example, say uh, the uh, what um, the okay. Let's say grab this for complicated. <laughs> okay, let's say a seed, right? A seed, let's say the, a bird eats the fruit, and the bird left the dropping somewhere, and the droppings hit the ground, and the ground, and then the rain falls, and the seeds start to germinate, which is purely physical, which is purely physical. The the seed traveling there, and then the more important the seed dropped on the ground. And slowly the earth covered it with the wind covered it and the rain showered and it germinates which is purely physical how is that projected by mind this question okay good so the um let us say the seed how the seed is projected by mind number one then how the water is projected by mind the rain then how the germination is protected, the, pro the process of germination, pro the process of production, right? And then the totality as a total scenario is pressured by mind. So this is what we need to explore. Okay, any, anybody missing? Two are missing there. Anybody else around you? Anybody missing? Okay. Okay, one of the... Now, this is very important. Um, the say how first we try to see how the how the seed exists subjectively, then the water exists subjectively, then the process of production from the seed to the sh the to the shrub the, to the shoot, how that is produced, the process of production, the act of production, that is um, the mentally imputed or subjectively imputed and then the total the total right okay germination of the seed this act of the germination of seed uh, the whole the, the whole process how that comes into being by matter projection okay the the last part the last and the second last the process of germination this process so this, the Shoshla, you have to remind me, uh, very likely tomorrow morning, or this the, the last session today, right? How that, for that matter, we have to discuss about emptiness of the mind, emptiness of the mind, right? 
emptiness of the pain, emptiness of the stress, emptiness of the depression. So this is what we're going to do as a part of that, how to process his mental mutation. But this is the seed. Seed, we see that what is really there is the seed. What is really there is the seed is just made of atoms. Do you agree with me or not? Which of the atom is seed? Nothing is there as a seed. You're getting it? So a bunch of atoms come together and from distance, conventional analysis, naked eyes, through this our perception is created as a seed. Finished, that is seed. Beyond this there is no seed. So this is how just the perception comes, perception is subjective or objective? Subjective. subjective. So the seed is nothing but a bunch of atoms there, and your mind, the conventional mind, conventional analysis, sees that as a seed. That's it. Finish. Beyond that, there's nothing there as a seed. This is how the seed comes into being through pure mental perception, also referred to as the, con the conventionally or conventional. Then the shoot. Again, the shoot is a bunch of atoms. Right? And let's say you go to the atomic level, you don't see any shoot there. Press the shoot. Again, bunch of atoms there. From distance, unanalyzed, the conventional analysis. From there, you see this shoot. That's finished. That's the shoot. Beyond this, beyond this mere appearance, the, there's nothing. There's a real shoot there. Then, third one is the process of production of the shoot. Production. Where's the production? If the production exists as real, objectively, then the production happens, this act of production. It happens at the time of seed or at the time of the shoot. When? How many of you have seen flowers growing? How many of you have not seen flowers growing? This end? Okay, we all have seen flowers growing. So this act of growing, act of grow, without the act of growing, the flower will not happen. Right? Act of growing must be the end. This act of growing of the flower, of the production of the flower, it happens when? If it happens, it must, it has to happen in time. Which time? At the time of the seed or the time to shoot? When? You can't point. You huh? can't point, which means objectively it's not there. Right? So at the time of the, the seed, without the shoot arising, the, 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 at the time of seed, there's no shoot. Without the shoot, what is arising? It makes no sense. If the production happens at the, the, the time of the shoot, it's already produced, so what's the need of production? That's where's the production? The first time you wouldn't believe, I don't know how many of you are stuck with, wow, it's amazing, I don't know, right? When I first read this, it really brought a great, great mental disturbance in me. Where is the production? It is there. It is undeniable function of the shoot coming to being. Where is it? At time to shoot, at time to seed. I could not posit it. it is, I could not find it. Mentally, it was so disturbing. Why disturbing? Because I was seeing the shoot as objective real. Now, objective, I don't see it anywhere. So there's a clash with my original belief and what now I am realizing. There's a clash there. With this clash, is manifest in the form of the uneasiness, discomfort, acute discomfort was happening there. Okay, so this is how the process is also a matter of imputation. And if you get a little time, we'll do the emptiness of the mind. If you get a little time. Okay, yes? But then, if there's no <coughs> mind at the time of the process. Say it again? I'm saying if there's no mind that witnesses the process, yes. the process still happens. Okay, so the, the question is now, the say first, right? First, what we have to see that objectively nothing is there. Objectively nothing is there. This is what you should be the, the convinced about. We must be con convinced about the fact that from the object is nothing is really there. Once you get it, but it is there, right? Production is there. Say, for example, when I was in the, say, when I was, what I could remember is when I was like six years, seven years, seven, eight years, I could remember that all my hairs were white, it deep black. Now white hairs are coming here and there, which means that it's, it's undeniable fact. And seven years, when I was seven years old, this hand was so beautiful, exquisitely beautiful. Now no more beautiful. 
this non beautiful ugly head is coming out from the beautiful hand coming out this production is happening undeniable fact yet what is it objectively at the time of the me being a teenager or me being the elder particularly age 40 and plus right which part which part this production happened at the time of the the teenage the which hand dirty hand is which the what ugly hand is coming out right it's not the effect is not there but the effect is not there the production that makes no sense <coughs> then at the time the effect there's no need for the production it's already there right so the head it was extremely confusing and the clash is happening in my mind so this one must be very condensed the objective nothing's there yet this functionality of the cause and effect that this the effect is undeniably arising which we condense with this effect is undeniably undeniably coming to being yet it is not from the object it should be from the subject subject meaning that it appears to the mind that said beyond this nothing is really the air so this is how we have to compromise and gradually uh, the the insight into this will become clearer 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 initially it should be intellectual intellectual but the intellectual what happens is that you get a very clear picture of the pizza picture of a pizza you very get a very clear picture so in some cases right the you don't even have a clear picture of the pizza you will have some kind of bread and tomatoes put on it a picture a picture of a bread with some tomatoes put in it oh it's a pizza something like this it's not really like this actually right even the picture is not clear and then later on you go somewhere and then it's a little better something like semi pizza still is a picture and third is a proper picture proper picture of the italian pizza right it's a proper picture but still it's a picture it's not real pizza then with this then you go there you can precisely say, okay this is real pizza this is not real pizza you can this is authentic pizza this is not authentic pizza you can make the decision so at that point you get it you get the the inferential cognition you can the first glimpse of emptiness the first glimpse of emptiness then the goosebumps will come to you with that experience and it also mean that before that before that with the meditation which we did this morning if you get some goosebumps it doesn't mean that you already got into emptiness even a very cursory form of emptiness can give you goosebumps very cross level of understanding of emptiness can give you goosebumps right okay so this is how we should proceed and we have 101 stanzas to go <clears throat> but with the the battery is gone they said not now not now no not quite for what for questions then no 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 if you want to remind i don't mind okay <clears throat> um so now we are on the uh page stanza 10 stanza 10 which page 54 stanza 10 now very important concept almost like the crux of what we're going to cover from this text the crux i like to share with you okay can you imagine uh the dirty water what is that yeah 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 okay Yakon River water from there, you realize that can you now can you now can you imagine that if you remove all the dirt, the what the purity will come out. Can you imagine that? The very pure water comes out of that. Can you imagine that? Very good. Now can you imagine? Can you extrapolate the same thing to your mind? If in this mind, if the dirt is all removed, anger removed, will manifest into compassion. Ignorance removed will manifest into wisdom. Agitation removed will manifest into peace. Can you imagine that? Then imagine that this mind, like the water, remove all the dirt and the purity comes out. Likewise, all the metal dirt they removed and the very stable, full of love, compassion, very pure mind. Okay, love, compassion, wisdom. Forget about it. For the uh, same, say the mind becomes very pure, like the very clear water. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Yeah. Okay. So let's say. So this 
the mind that we have, which is dirty noun, defiled noun, if through some means we can remove the dirt, the way the dirt from the water is taken out, the purity comes out. Way the dirt of the mind they are removed, then the purity comes out. Purity of the mind comes out. Can you just imagine, visualize a very pure mind where the agitation, anger, they're all subsided, they're all removed, like pure water coming out after removing all the dirt. Can you imagine that? Okay, let's see. That mind is what, that mind, the pure mind, is seen through conventional analysis or ultimate analysis. Huh? That mind is positive phenomena or negative phenomena? Positive. Huh? Positive. positive phenomena. Very good. This mind is positive phenomena, and this is what we call as the, say, conventional pure nature of the mind. Conventional pure nature of the mind. Conventional pure nature of the mind. Now, Conventional pure nature of the mind, this is something like the very pure water, like the pure mind. And many people, many practitioners, many practitioners, they emphasize all their practice is designed to activate this pure mind, to manifest this pure mind. Many practitioners are there. And in fact, the practice of the, the uh, Mahamudra and practice of Dzogchen and say many of the teachers of these will take you to that level of just making the mind so pure, right? So pure. It will take you there, many teachers. And many teachers of Dzogchen and the Mahamudra, they will take you further, right? So many teachers will take you just there. So who, those teachers who are not so exposed to emptiness concept, they will take you the air. And even that much practice is so profound to, to illuminate, to manifest, to manifest the conventional true nature of the mind, which is so pure, which is so radiant, pure. And uh, from this, you can feel the peace and the calmness. This one part. Now, so this mind, Pure mind is seen by which mind? Conventional analysis or ultimate analysis? When you see the same mind, for example, this water, when you see this water through naked eyes, you see this object was inside this cup, when you see this from your, your the naked eyes, which is conventional analysis or ultimate analysis? Conventional analysis. When you see this through conventional analysis, you see this as a water. When you see the same thing through electron microscope, you see this absence of the water, which is, which is metaphor for, I say the electron microscope, which is metaphor for ultimate analysis. With the ultimate analysis, you will see the same object in the light of the absence of the water. Likewise, the same mind, which is so pure, so pure, wow, it's amazing. Now my all this agitation, the waves, very corrosion waves, all the minds subside, and the purity of the mind is coming out. This all seen by your conventional analysis. Okay, now the same mind, which is so pure, seen by the conventional analysis, when seen by the ultimate analysis, you see the emptiness of the, emptiness of this pure nature of the mind emptiness of the pure nature of the mind. This is the ultimate truth of the mind. Ultimate truth of the mind. Other one is conventional, the conventional true nature of the mind. Now you are seeing the ultimate true nature of the mind. Right? That even this mind which is so pure, otherwise so pure, otherwise so pure, doesn't exist from the object. Even that's existing from the subject. So even this this very pure mind, which, which we call as the conventional true nature of the mind. In this mind, when we subject this to ultimate analysis, we see the emptiness nature of this mind. So that is the ultimate true nature of the mind. You're getting it? So with the same mind, which is so pure, we can see this mind through two true analysis. Conventional analysis and ultimate analysis. What is seen by the conventional analysis, this is the, this is the proliferating Buddha nature. The pure nature of the mind, which 
you can see through the conventional analysis is the proliferating Buddha nature. And the same object, which you see as the conventional true nature of mind, which is so pure, when looked at from, like, when looked at from the electron mind, when looked at through ultimate analysis, what you see is the ultimate true nature of the mind, which is the natural Buddha nature. So these two are the two sides of the same coin. These two are the, these two. These two are the, okay. So this pure nature, of the pure nature of the mind coming out, becomes so pure after stilling the mind of all the turbulence, disturbance, and so forth, the pure nature comes out. One, same pure nature of the mind seen from the ultimate analysis, you see the emptiness of the pure nature of the mind. The two things. So these two things, they are entity-wise or not different. Hey. These two are entity-wise one because we are looking at the same object through two different perspectives. Right? Isolated wise one are different. Different. In what way these two are different? Different subjects. Different subjects. Yes. It is two different perceptions by two different subjects. And what else? Different analysis. Different analysis. Because uh, you subject the same object to two different analysis. Anybody else? I'm looking for something else. In what way these two are answered by different? Positive, yes, over there? Okay, uh, your name again? Yael. 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 The Inbal. So tell in the same yeah, listen to what Inbal is saying, if these two are same. Positive uh, Okay, the mic. No, no, the mic is there. <laughs> no, just speak to the mic, it doesn't matter. Everybody can hear. No problem. But Okay, so one is, say the one is positive phenomena and the other is negative phenomena. There are the positive phenomena and negative phenomena, these two are always anti-wise, isolated wise different. You getting it? Okay, so the one is positive phenomena, which is a pure nature of the mind, which we're seeing, when you see that, oh, I'm so short-tempered, short I can easily become irritated, I'm easily irritable, and then through various techniques, meditation emptiness, meditation compassion, meditation dependent origination, then slowly your mind start to quell, and you start that you become happier, 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 and you even start to see your own mind inside, you observe your mind, early is very turbulent, now it's becoming more and more calm, peaceful, and then now you see the transparency of the mind, so pure, so clean there, um, that the more you focus, the mind becomes even cleaner, more, say, the, the, the peaceful, transparent, the luminosity is coming out, so that is the positive phenomenon. That's a positive phenomenon. And then the same mind, which you see as a positive phenomenon, which is so luminous and clear, luminous, and amazingly peaceful. So the same mind you looked at through ultimate analysis, you see as emptiness of the luminosity of the mind. That is even more wonderful, right? You may say that, oh, now so far we put so much effort to see this the luminosity. Now we are seeing the emptiness of the luminosity. No. We see emptiness of luminosity there, then the experience of the emptiness of luminosity, even that is more profound than the first experience. You're getting it? Okay. So the emptiness of the luminosity of the mind, that is the natural Buddha nature. Natural Buddha nature and the luminosity, luminosity, the clear light, the clear light of the mind, that is the, the proliferating Buddha nature too. So this proliferating Buddha nature, so when you practice, when you practice this with my emptiness more and more, break into the mind, eventually the proliferating Buddha nature that you have in your mind now, this will become the Buddha's mind. Buddha's mind is known as, Buddha's mind in general, is known as the wisdom dharmakaya. Dharmakaya, there are two, natural dharmakaya, so power dharmakaya, and the and uh, the wisdom, the jnana and dharmakaya. 
Western Dharmakaya and the natural Dharmakaya. So Bhava, so Bhava Dharmakaya and the Jnana, Jnana Dharmakaya. Jnana meaning the Western Dharmakaya and the natural Dharmakaya. So the, the, what we have, the Buddha nature within us, there are two, what are the two Buddha natures? Proliferating Buddha nature, and which is seen by the conventional analysis, and the natural, natural Buddha nature seen by the ultimate analysis. So these two are the two isolates, but the same entity. The same entity, two different isolates. So these two, when you become enlightened, when you become enlightened, your proliferating Buddha nature will become the Jnana Dharmakaya, Buddha's wisdom, wisdom Dharmakaya, wisdom truth body of the Buddha, and the uh, the natural Dharmakaya, the natural Buddha nature will become the uh, the Swabhava Dharmakaya or the natural Dharmakaya of the Buddha. So this is how, you know, see what we have. Say for example, you squeeze a handful of sand, no oil will come out of that. You squeeze a sunflower seeds, oil will come out of that. So likewise, we, we, we with, with exerting, with effort, with effort, what comes out? Buddhahood comes out. How? Buddhahood, there are two kinds. Same. Of course, there are, Buddha, there are so many ways of class, classifying. But in your mind, but in your mind, Buddhas come house, like Buddhahood comes out in two forms. One is the Jnana Dharma, Dharmakaya, and the other one is Bhava Dharmakaya, meaning the wisdom Dharmakaya, or the Buddha's mind, and the emptiness of Buddha's mind, too. Emptiness of Buddha's mind and the Buddha's mind. So, the proliferating Buddha nature that you have, that will eventually become the Buddha's mind, or the Jnana Dharma, Dharmakaya, and the uh, the natural Dharmakaya within you, natural Buddha nature within you, that will become the natural Dharmakaya when you become Buddha, right? Okay. So now, if you have to really get a good picture, good picture of what is Buddha, good picture of what is Buddha, then the idea is, the, the Buddha has two aspects. When each one of us, when we become Buddha, when we become Buddha, it's not necessary that you should have the the, 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 the figure. When you become Buddha, you should have this figure, this the appearance. It's not necessary. You can appear in the form of a girl. You can appear in the form of um, the boy. You can appear in the form of um, you know whatever, whatever form. There's no specific form. It entirely depends on the the, the beings who you're going to benefit. Okay, so now when you become Buddha, what happens is that within you there are two aspects. One which is exclusively accessible to you and other Buddhas. The other which is, ex which is accessible to the sentient beings also. So, what do you have? Tell me, what do you have now? You as a person, what do you have? You have the body and you have the mind. You're getting it? You have the body and the mind. Which of the two is easily accessible to other people? body, right? Say, so people can see me. People cannot see my mind. You're getting it? Your mind is exclusively what you can see, not by somebody else. Likewise, the Buddha has two aspects. Buddha's mind aspect and the body aspect. Two aspects. So, the Buddha's, overall the Buddha's, overall the Buddhahood is known as Dharmakaya in general. Dharmakaya in general. Now, this Dharmakaya or the Buddha, Buddha, so that has two aspects, one which is physical, one which is non-physical. Physical which is primarily exclusively for the sentient beings, to help the sentient beings. Otherwise the Buddha does not have to appear in physical form, no need. It's just for the benefit of the beings. So the Buddha, in each one of us, if you put effort, you become a Buddha, what happens is that what you seek now, what you seek now is what you will achieve at that point. What do we seek? Fearlessness and the infinite happiness. Any aspiration that you might have, any aspiration that you can think of, of the believers, non-believers, scientists, ordinary person, politicians, beggars, anybody, all can somehow be summarized into these two. Fearlessness and the infinite happiness. This is what we can summarize. Anything, money, power, position, and the well, or whatever, everything that you can think of that people aspire can all be subsumed under these two categories, fearlessness and the infinite happiness. So, 
the point is that the for you when you when you become enlightened, 